either will find nothing or the whole store will buy. I'll want to buy everything. Hello, we're on our way to a birthday party in Indianapolis. And we're, we left a little early so we can go to some Goodwills. I've got Emma, Mark, and Jaden. He's so happy. We'll see if we can find anything. And that's about it. The ritzy part of Indianapolis. I approve. So we'll see what we can find. Either, we, we either will find nothing or the whole store will buy. I'll want to buy everything. Hi guys, it's Misty, otherwise known as the Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Misty and I'm a reseller on eBay, Poshmark, and Mercari. But I also own a brick and mortar antique store called Wildflower Antiques in Bedford, Indiana. So if you ever come down this way, come in and say hi. I went to Goodwill in the fancy part of town uh, in Indianapolis over the weekend and I was a little, I had high hopes. I thought, wow, I, I bet people donate great things here. Well, I mean, we found a couple really nice things and one potentially very nice thing that I'll show you at the end, but it wasn't that spectacular. It wasn't any better than going to my everyday run of the mill Goodwills that I go to in my local town. So let's go ahead and get on with the things that I bought. The first thing I'll show you, I bought three of these. This was kind of the first thing that I found and they are these, they're dirty, they need cleaned, but they are these Remington rifles and shotgun glasses. They're just like a, I don't know what kind of drink you drink in these, the scotch maybe. Uh, they have a little pheasant here. It's gonna be kind of hard to see because of the glare. I did pick up three of them. They were 69 cents, so that's staying right into my cheapskate price range. I looked up comps on these in the store, and a set of three is selling for about 25 to 30 dollars. So anything that is Remington or shotgun related tends to do fairly well. Now, not all of it. So you still have to look up your comparable listings. So don't take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt. What sells for me may not sell for you and what sells for you may not sell for me. That's just the name of the game. So these videos are just kind of at a, a tool to let you know the things that I have researched and the things that I can sell. So got three of these, hopefully they'll sell. If I can pay under a dollar for something, typically it's worth the try. All right, so I got three of those. I also picked up this cute little, I guess it's a creamer. I want to say it's a teapot, but it's rather small. But I believe that it is left in. The, heart, the tag is a little, but you can see the L and the T. And that's the, the typical design of a left in tag. Uh, I did pay $1.99 for this cute little creamer coffee mug. No, not coffee mug. Tea, tea kettle? Coffee kettle? teapot. Those are the words I'm looking for. Sometimes the words don't come flowing out of my mouth the way that I would like them to, but it still has the lid. There's no damage on it at all. I thought it was super cute. So for $1.99, I'm going to take the risk. It probably will sell for about $15 to $18 or so on eBay. The next thing that I picked up, I have another one of these in the shop, but it is, I believe that this is Hall Pottery. Hall, Shawnee, McCoy. I do not think that it's McCoy, but I could be wrong. There are no markings on it at all, but you can tell it is a stoneware planter. No damage on it at all. I paid $1.99 for it. These look really nice around Easter time as far as display goes. So the one that I have at the shop is a little frightening. It's like a teal or a green color and it has red eyes. So it has that creepy aspect, which I mean, I kind of like. This is just your everyday friendly little pink. He looks kind of angry. Boy, he does look, now that I put him up to the camera, he is an angry little lamb. Hmm. So, oh, I, I am just noticing, oh, I'm noticing two little uh, chips there. I didn't notice those in the store. Right there and right there. 
You'd think that I would, but I didn't. Still, these, you know, they're not big money makers. I tend to think that it's my mission on this planet to save every cool little piece of vintage item like this in the world. It was under $2. So I got it. These look really cute at Easter time on a display in your shop or your antique booth. So sometimes I buy things knowing that it's not going to bring in a ton of money, but I can use it in other ways to help stage a piece of furniture or other items around the shop. And you people do repurpose these. I've seen people put kind of some batting in here with some fabric and they'll use them as pin cushions. Another thing I got, I've never seen these before. I've seen that Jocelyn, Crazy Lamp Lady, has picked these up before. You know, she the area that she lives in, the, the Amish community is very prevalent. And honestly, down here where I, I live, it is too, but I don't really see these that often. But they are these hex signs. And I don't know, I haven't researched these to know what exactly this one means. Um, if you know, feel free to leave a comment. This one has acorns and leaves on it. This one has two pheasants, I guess, with big, big eyes. You see their eyes there? This one is a dove, two doves and a heart, probably meaning love of some sort. And this one's like a single dove with a heart. They were 69 cents a piece. So I don't know if I'm going to lot these together or if I'm going to sell them in the shop. I don't know yet. I probably will sell them online. I don't think this is something that, um, I think that I can make more money on it selling them online. So I'm going to research and find out what the symbolism means on these and uh, get them listed. But they are selling, I've seen lots of them, like lots of five, six, uh, sell for, oh, 18 to 20 dollars. For 69 cents a piece, it's something that I've not picked up before and I wanted to go ahead and give it a try. The next thing, I, this, buying these things right here that I'm about to show you are the things that drives my husband insane because I always say that I want to streamline my house. I want nice, clean lines and then I go to Goodwill and I buy things like this and I'll keep it. And at Easter time, I will completely transform my house into creepy Easter bunnies. Look at him. He's not that creepy, but I mean, he's kind of giving you the stink eye a little bit. I don't know why I like these things so much. Someone has hand painted them. They're nothing spectacular. I actually even paid $1.99 for this. That's kind of the crazy part. This is something that I'm keeping because it's just crap like this that makes me happy. I like you, bunny. And I have rescued you. All right. The next thing that I picked up is this cute little Connecticut uh, glass. I do sell these pre pretty prevalent in the shop. Uh, and it has America the Beautiful on one side. And then the Connecticut state with the different state symbols. Um, 69 cents for these. You just really can't go wrong. If I sell for $2 in the shop, I'm still making money on this. So I will clean this up and put it in the shop. I picked this one up. This one intrigued me. Again, I've said this before, pottery just intrigues me. I, I love the way that it looks. I love the way that it feels. I like that someone's made it with their hands. I just like pottery. This one is made in, I think it's Buckman or Buck. I'm going to say this wrong. And there's probably people watching this that are going to be like, she don't even know how to pronounce that. No, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's Bookman. Bookman. Let's say it's Bookman. But it's made in Scotland. I do know that it is a thistle. And it has this beautiful, it's hand painted on this side. And it has the little blossoms on this side. It's a really beautiful light blue color. But I love, you can just see the, the craftsmanship. Do you see the lines of the pottery wheel in there? I love it. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And I paid 69 cents for it. I think that I might have already told you that. But let me peel off the sticker here and I'll show you the markings on the bottom. So when I'm buying pottery pieces, you know, when you look for markings like that, it gives you something to research a little bit. There's a serial number on here and it does say that it was made in Scotland. I My eyes were drawn to it just because I think it's a beautiful piece. But... Then it has a little bit of tidbits of information that I can use in my research. 
which I love to do. I love to research these items. So I picked this up and these are selling for about $15 or so online. But this is something that I will put online because the market is more broad to a worldwide audience for these types of things than they are in my little hometown. But I just love the way that this feels. I love pottery. So while we're talking about pottery, I'll show you this other mug. Again, 69 cents. That's how much mugs are in my parts. Even in way up in fancy Indianapolis, they're 69 cents. This is the Deneen Pottery. This one is for Miso University. Never heard of that. But it has the university seal here. It's just this really pretty drip glaze pottery. And it is made by that Deneen Pottery. So it was a commissioned piece that this university commissioned to have these made. They sold them in their bookstores. It's not a vintage piece. But it is a, still a sellable piece for 69 cents. So there still is profit for me to make there. Again, probably 15 to $17. And this is something that I will put online because it's not a local piece to sell in the shop. It's just beautiful. Look at that. This is made, this is just a salt glaze crock bottle made by Gray Portobello. I don't know. It could have held any number of things. I buy these. For 99 cents, I definitely buy this. Someone tried to sell it at their yard sale for $1.50 and it didn't sell. So Goodwill tried selling it for 99 cents. It is an older piece. It's salt glaze. And you can kind of tell when you're feeling the pottery, you, it almost feels like salt has been sprinkled upon this bottle. And you can feel it in the glaze. These do look nice. I will sell this in the shop because it is a primitive looking piece and primitive sell well for me in my shop. I'll put it in a um, in a display with other bottles. I might even tie a little, you know, gingham ribbon or something around it just to accent it a little bit. And I'll probably sell this for 10 to $12 in the shop. So again, not a big money maker, but it looks nice in your decor. So, and I know that this will sell for me in the shop. This next piece I'm very excited about if and and I'm asking for help. I do not know who made this. I, there is a maker's mark and again, I literally just pulled this stuff out of the bag and I haven't researched anything other than what I researched for a little bit when I was in the store, but I got this beautiful vintage console piece. So here is it's a shell, you know, planter and then it has the two candlestick holders that go on each side. So this would go on top of a TV. Beautiful piece. The candlestick holders were 69 cents a piece and the console planter itself was $1.99. Let me show you the mark. I haven't researched this. I, I want to say that I have seen this marking before. They're made in Japan, but you can see, you see it right there. So I know that you guys out there will know what these are and you'll help me and you'll save me hours upon hours of looking through Google image search searches or just looking through Google for the maker's mark of this. It's probably, I'm going to, you're going to tell me what it is and it'll be like, oh yeah, that's what it is. But I'm just going to crowdsource and ask you guys for help. It, I think that's gorgeous. It's, it's just this pretty yellow, like a cornflower yellow. There's no chips at all on it. The bottom of the, let me make sure that I'm going to show it to you right side up, of the console is also marked with the same marking. I just couldn't pass it up for the price. So I'm going to try this. I might, I might list it in the shop first and see just because I'm scared that it's going to break <laughs> when I ship it. So I'm going to try it in the shop at first. No, again, like the things that I'm putting in the shop that I'm kind of like, oh, I know I could sell it online. I'll wait until after Christmas and then I might put it on online after that. That's kind of the time frame that I'm keeping in my head. But I just thought it, I just thought it was it's just pretty. It's just a pretty piece. So I wanted to make sure that I got it for the price. You can't beat that price. All right. Let me see if I can lay this down without breaking it. All right, this next piece I got is, well, I'll show you what it looks like first. It's not vintage. Oops. It has this little snowman on it. 
It is Ray Dunn by Magenta. It was $1.99. And what this is, this is a napkin holder. So you put your napkins in here. And then this little guy right here is the weight that holds the napkins down or prevents them from blowing away. It's not going to sell for that much online. Maybe $18 to $20 online. So I'm going to try this in the shop at first. I don't like to put a lot of mass produced pieces like this in the shop, but I do have people actively messaging me, asking me if I sell Ray Dunn, do I have Ray Dunn? And I do, and I sprinkle it in a little bit just because when I want people to come into the shop, I obviously I want them to look for the antiques, but I, I have sprinkled a little, a few newer things here and there so someone could come in and snatch up a gift. Ray Dunn mugs are the only mass produced thing that I put. Everything else in the shop besides antiques are all locally made arts and crafts and that type of thing, jewelry and that sort of thing. But I don't know. I'm going to research this a little bit more. I couldn't find exact comparables for this. So, I mean, if I can sell it for $30, $40 online, I won't be able to sell it for that much in the shop. So then I probably will try to sell it online. So this piece, I have one of these that dad got in after someone's yard sale. They were just giving stuff away that didn't sell. So we snatched it up and I didn't think it was anything. And then I looked up comps for it and it was made by Blue Sky Corporation. What are these little candle holders? So this one is Good Old Dog's Garage. It's very three dimensional. Just a clay, pottery, art, a clay pottery piece. Here's the little dog down here. There's a tire. And then it has this little tray. You can see in the store, the store was trying to sell it for $38. Not, not the Goodwill store, the gift store. And Goodwill <laughs> ever so kindly priced them separately, like Goodwill likes to do. I paid $2.99 for this piece. Oh, there's a car on the top. And I paid, well, this was marked $1.99. When I got up to the counter, I told the cashier, I said, you know, these go together because what you do is you put your little candle here and then you set the candle guy, the candle house. We'll, we'll call it a candle house. You set the candle house on top of here and then it illuminates. So I said, they go, they go together. So she's like, okay, I'll just throw it in. That was a lucky deal because that doesn't always happen. So pick these up. These I will sell online about $25 or so. So not too bad of a deal. I get really excited. I like the holidays. I like to decorate. Ooh, look at me. I got something black all over my face from that candle thing. I like the holidays. I like to decorate for all the holidays in my home and in the shop. And I make it 10 times harder than what it has to be. But that's just kind of me in a nutshell. So I picked up this little guy and okay, let me show him to you. Look at him. He is a little leprechaun and he has one itty bitty little chip there on his foot and his beard is not as fiery red as it used to be or orange as it used to be. He is vintage. He's made in Japan. You can see there his little sticker on the bottom. He didn't have a price on him. And when I got up to the checkout, I said, you know, he didn't have a price on him. And she's like, oh, 69 cents. And I was like, okay. But look at his little unibrow. I love him. It is hard to find vintage St. Patrick's Day. It just isn't, it just doesn't come up that often. I'm keeping him. I, I just love him. Look at his face and his little green eyes. I think he's great for 69 cents. Absolutely. And I'm keeping him because this is the kind of thing that I like. Okay, next little vintage item that I got, I paid $1.99 for, and it's this really cute Lucite with the little speckled shells. They look like shells to me, or speckled rocks. You can see there on the inside. But I think they're like little shells, stones. This is Lucite, it's a tinted Lucite. Um, probably from the 60s, 70s, and it's a little, this little owl. So you put your napkins in there. It's in great condition. 
I've actually sold a night light, a little Lucite night light that was very similar to this. Sold the night light for about $25. This guy is a little bit more common than the night lights, and he probably will sell for about probably about $25, but he's in great condition. He has a little sticker. He's very dirty. I need to clean them right in there, but it's so faded, so I can't read what it says. Sometimes they sold these in souvenir shops. So very cute little Lucite Owl for $1.99. All right, the next thing is this Med Center talking alarm clock. I did, they didn't cover up the barcode on here, and so I scanned this using the eBay app and on my, on my phone, and it sells for about $30, and I paid $1.99 for it. Brand new in the box, never used. It is always a good idea to open up the box, even though it's sealed, and just check to see that it's still, it is what it is in the box. I have bought things before, and it is not what's in the box before. So it's always a good idea just to open it up a little bit and check. Unless it's like wrapped in, you know, plastic wrap, then you don't want to open it up because then you're going to hurt your, your listing of new in box. All right, the next thing that I picked up, this is not old. It probably isn't even remotely old at all, but no, it's not. Sometimes you can find these plastic pumpkins and they are marked Empire. They'll be embossed with an Empire seal uh, into the plastic. I, I use these at the shop for decoration and this one was 69 cents, which is cheaper than buying them at Dollar Tree or Walmart. So I went ahead and picked it up. I, I sometimes will put flowers in it and just use it on the top of a piece of furniture or on the, on the middle of the table for a centerpiece and put things around it. It's just something fun. So cheaper than buying it at Walmart. The next thing I picked up are these vintage Rolodex. They have not been filled out, but these are, these used to be on everybody's desk back in the days where you kept all your contacts, um, but people still do like these. And being the fact that this one has never been, it still has all of the cards and they're not filled out, I went ahead and tried it for 99 cents. I just had to. Um, these probably will sell for um, 15 to $18 or so. I have seen them sell for upwards of $30, but they were the little bit bigger ones or the ones that are round and roll around. So $4.99. Cents. There's still profit to be made there. Okay, the next thing I got was this Bernard or Bernat Bernard holiday hoop with Mrs. Claus on it. Or Mrs. Crinkle is her name. There's her. These I do well. When I can find these new for this one was $1.99. That's typically what I pay for them. Um, they do well for me. It's kind of the cruel kit that someone can make themselves. It's never been used. You can see it's all still in the bag. The bag is a little ripped here on the bottom and I will take pictures of that and I will note that in the listing that it, the bag has a tear in the bottom, but all the contents are included. So this will probably sell 18 to $25 for this guy. All right. The next thing that I picked up is this Hallmark keepsake. This is dated 1996. It's gone with the wind. So there's Tara and then there's Rhett and well, I know it's Vivian Lee, but I don't know. I, I'm going to do something. I'm going to say something very, very horrible and people are going to gasp when they, when they hear me say this, I have never seen gone with the wind ever. I have a hard time sitting through very long movies. I have a hard time sitting still, period, and sitting through a very long movie. Oh, it's Scarlett O'Hara. Duh, Misty. Scar Scarlett O'Hara. See, I knew her real name, Vivian Lee. I love old Hollywood, but man, that's a movie that is just so long, and I can't sit through it. But I paid 99 cents for this ornament, which I will do all day long if I can get a Hallmark ornament for 99 cents. Um, these sell for about $25. On eBay. This is made by Roman Incorporated. You can see there's the name. I've sold um, things that were made by this company before. This one is a golfing Santa. I guess I could show you the top of it there. This one is Galleria Lucchese Holiday Tea Time Santa Golfing Figure. 
and it has the number on it. It was made in 1988. It is, let me pull them out so you can see. He has this lovely um, styrofoam that will get all over the place. But here he is. He's a golfing Santa. And that is not damaged. That's the lovely styrofoam. These do really well. So he should sell for about $25 or so. And so I'm going to get him listed very, very soon because Christmas items are really starting to pick up and sell right now. So if you have Christmas items, get them listed. And I wouldn't necessarily call him new in the box. I don't think, it doesn't seem like he's ever been displayed, but he does have all of his provenance in here. All this paperwork is in here as well as this little tag here just kind of tells about his little story. Okay, the last hard good item that I got is the thing that I'm most excited. This is fabulous. And I don't know where I'm going to put this in my home. And when I bought it, my husband thought I was buying it to sell in the shop. And when we got home, he said, you're not going to keep that. And oh, yes, I am. I don't know where I'm going to hang it. It doesn't match a thing in my house. But it's glorious. I'm going to kind of pan it to the, from side to side. So you could just take it all in. Let me if I scoot back a little bit. But it's this great picture of cats. And as I scan this picture along, look at their faces. Okay? That's the fun part. Look at their faces. They're all angry. They're all angry cats. They are not happy. And you know that I love things that are angry. I like angry Santas. I like angry lambs, leprechauns. This was made by Radiki Incorporated in South Bend, Indiana. I don't know. I it, This could be worth a million dollars. I mean, it's probably not, but isn't this great? Look at those cats. What was one of them? This one. Look at that one. Look at those two. This is great. And like I said, and it's almost like the fabric, it's a fabric or I don't even think it's a canvas necessarily. I mean, I'm no art expert, but I think this is fabulous. And I did pay, I paid $5.99 for that glorious picture. This last thing that I found, if it sells what I think that it's going to sell for, this is probably one of the m most amazing articles of clothing that I have ever found. And you know that I am getting out of the clothing game and for the most part. I mean, unless it's special pieces. But this was the very first thing that I saw when we walked in the door. And we went on a Sunday and it was kind of busy. And on Sundays where we live, all of the, the color of the week tags are 99 cents on clothing pieces, not on hard goods. So we were looking for the jackets as I'm, you know, right now I am looking for vintage jackets. And I was like, I came across this jacket and it says, I know both. I am both. And I held it up and I was like, what is, to my daughter who's 20 and might know what this means. And I said, what does that even mean? And she was like, oh, I don't know. So then I just, I was feeling it. I was like, it feels like a really well-made jacket. And then I noticed that it had this like leather, this is the sleeve, it had this leather pocket and it, and it zips. And this is like really nice quality leather. And I thought, wow, that feels really good. And I was looking and I was like, there's not a tag anywhere. There isn't a tag anywhere. And then we got to looking even more and then we see this tag. And it says June J which apparently is a really expensive designer. I have never heard of them ever before in my life. If you have heard of them, please comment below. But we got to looking up comps for this. My husband started looking up comps for this. This whole jacket just confuses me. It's very minimal. It does some weird things with the zipper. It zips like down on the side here. The zippers have some weight to them. They're a very heavy duty zipper. It's a very, very well constructed, well made coat. But the comps that we were finding these for, they were selling new. One of them sold very similar. I couldn't find this exact same 
one with the saying on the back, they were selling for like $1,900. We found some used that were selling for $650 and $850 for these bomber style jackets. June J. Oh, so I'm a little, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to list this very soon. I haven't decided if I'm going to do it as an auction. I need to do a little bit more research before I just jump the gun and throw it on. But it doesn't, like, that's the only tag is that one that says June J. I'm going to look inside the pockets to see if there's any other tags because I don't know what the fabric content is. So this is going to be maybe something good. I hope so. So I said, I think I said on my Instagram, I find this and I can't find the Gucci. I want to find the Gucci just once in my lifetime, but I want to keep the Gucci. If I find a Gucci bag, I'm keeping it. And someone had said, well, if you sell this jacket, then you can buy a Gucci. Well, no, that's not what I want to do. I want to find a Gucci bag in the thrift store. That's my holy grail. So I don't know. We'll see what this goes for, but it's pretty exciting. When you find things like that, it really, it gets very exciting and it's kind of makes you appreciate what you do a little bit more. But you know, if this brand new in the store will, would be $1,900. I mean, I'll sell it to someone for $600. Just saying. So that is what we got on our highfalutin fancy Indianapolis Goodwill Day. It wasn't a whole lot. I think the total that we spent on everything was about $80. So it wasn't that bad of a day. It was a typical, we went to three different Goodwills and um, I don't think that's too bad. So if I, I mean, my gosh, if I can sell that jacket for $600, then I mean, that's unreal. That's, I had said something about selling a doll for $40, that that was a thing that dreams are made of. I'm taking that back right now because if I can sell this jacket for $600 and I paid $5.99 for it, $5.99, those are the things that dreams are made of. But that and finding the Gucci at the, at the Goodwill, that, that would be the thing that dreams are made of. But that is this video, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you do, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. I'll bring videos, haul videos like this talking about owning a, an antique store. Um, I am going to an auction this weekend, so I'm very excited about that. It's been a while. We've just recently cleared out our 12 foot trailer and mama's want to fill it back up again. So that video will be coming out next week. And I hope that you guys have a great weekend and I will see you all very soon. Bye.